Undervolt in these days has gotten very popular amongst PC enthusiasts and for good reason. Graphics cards these days are just pushing out excessive heat and a lot of people aren't comfortable with running their GPUs very hot. And that's why in this video I will be giving you a guide on how to undervolt your graphics card. But before I get in this video though, let me know in the comments. Have you ever undervolted your graphics card or attempted it? Let me know down below. Before I get into the process of undervolting, I'd like to go over why you might want to undervolt your graphics card. And essentially, undervolting is reducing the voltage that your GPU operates at while trying to maintain the clock speed. This will result in less power draw and less heat output. And it should result in the same gaming performance, if not sometimes a bit better. And because less heat is being pumped into the GPU core, which will result in less heat, this will result in a longer GPU lifespan as well, which is great because electricity and new GPUs certainly are not cheap. Also, a lot of GPUs are just not tuned very well out of the factory at all, especially AMD GPUs. Nvidia tends to be not too bad, they just run pretty hot but AMD GPUs are just not very well tuned out of the factory, especially since sort of the RX 5000 series, I know they weren't tuned very well, and even the Vega cards as well. They were just fed excessive voltage, which would increase the heat output, and it was just wasted energy because you weren't really getting much more performance than the boost clocks. As I've just said, undervolting usually doesn't decrease performance, and sometimes it can even increase performance. And it also has a host of other benefits because if your card is prone to coil whining, undervolting can definitely help this as I know with my RTX 3080, that thing coil winds pretty bad, but after an undervolt, it's not too bad. But before I get into the process of undervolting, only do this if you're comfortable with it. You shouldn't be able to damage your graphics card with undervolting as you're not overvolting it or overclocking it. So you should be fine, but only do this if you're comfortable with it. The application I'll be using for NVIDIA GPUs is MSI Afterburner, and for AMD GPUs, I will be using the Radeon software, which comes included with their driver package. Although, if you've got an AMD GPU, I'd still recommend installing MSI Afterburner. You can undervolt using that as well, but if you've got an AMD GPU, I'd recommend using the AMD Radeon software. And it's not just undervolting that you can do with MSI Afterburner anyways. You can change your fan curves, you can overclock with it, and you can also monitor and benchmark your system's performance as well. Speaking of benchmarking your PC, I will be making a video on how you can do that, so make sure you stay subscribed and turn on that notification bell. So to undervolt NVIDIA graphics cards, you will need MSI Afterburner. Here I will be undervolting my RTX 3080, but the process is pretty much the same for most NVIDIA GPUs. Also, when you're undervolting, I recommend running a looping benchmark like Unigine Heaven, here you'll be able to tell if you push your undervolt a bit too far because it will just crash. So, to undervolt using an NVIDIA graphics card, hit Ctrl F in MSI Afterburner. This will open the frequency curve. And you can see each point with each one stating the frequency of the voltage being supplied. With the 3080, the clocks are pretty high. So here, select the highest clocked node and drag it down to your desired frequency while holding Alt. This will make sure that it is the max frequency your card will operate at. Now select your desired voltage. Here I selected 875 millivolt. Drag that up to your desired frequency and click apply. To check if your GPU is running at your desired frequency, use a program like HW Monitor. This literally just brings up every sensor that your PC has and it's just a general good utility program to have installed anyway. And from my testing, my RTX 3080 dropped from 80 degrees to 73 after an undervolt of 870 millivolt was applied. This was still clocked at 1860 megahertz and I believe the fans were a bit quieter afterwards as well. And the wattage was reduced from 315 watts to 270 watts so it's a bit better for power consumption as well. If you're testing and you see artifacting or crashing, raise the voltage ever so slightly or alternatively you could drop the frequency i'd recommend just giving it a bit more voltage as this does depend on the silicon lottery and the quality of the silicon in your graphics card also feel free to experiment as well undervolting is a relatively safe procedure as you're not feeding it more voltage you're feeding it less voltage so yeah it's a pretty safe feature procedure even 
With AMD graphics cards, you have two options. You can either use MSI Afterburner or alternatively, you could use the Radeon software. Today, I'll be using the Radeon software, but do be warned, don't use both at the same time. Use one or the other, but I recommend the AMD Radeon software. Here, go to performance, tuning, and then enable both control and voltage control. Lower the voltage to your desired voltage and then click apply. In the AMD Radeon software, there's also a built-in stress test software that you can use as well, which is great. And this just leads me to believe that the Radeon software is just much better than GeForce Experience. I know all these Nvidia shills in the comments are going to be shouting at me, but it's the truth. But the same basic concept applies here. You'll know if you've pushed it too far because the test will either crash or just glitch out or something like that. And if that happens, just feed your graphics card a bit more voltage and you should be fine. When I'm under vaulting personally, I like to run Unigen Heaven in the background. I did mention this as it's a looping benchmark and you will quickly see if there's any issues with your undervault. It's totally free and you can download it from their website and I'll link it down in the description below. But this doesn't uncover all of the problems that your undervault might have because I did undervault one time and in Unigen Heaven, it was perfectly fine. But when I was playing Battlefield, I was getting a few direct X errors. And this is usually the hallmark of a bit of a bad undervolt. So I gave it some extra voltage and it was totally fine after that. So take this as a warning. Your undervolt isn't 100% until you've fully tested it on the workload that you like to do. So if you've got a favorite game that you like to play, make sure you test that as well, because that will uncover any problems with your workload and your undervolt. So if you've got no issues, you're good. But if you do run into like a few DirectX crashes or application crashes, which does happen in some games, I know that without an undervolt. But if it's more than regular, it might be worth just giving your GPU a bit more voltage and you should be fine. You could alternatively lower the frequency of your graphics card, but I don't recommend that. Just feed it a bit more voltage and you should be fine. So the TLDR of this is that Unigen Heaven is quick and easy for the testing. It will show any outrageous problems with your undervolt, so it will like either crash or lock up windows or something like that. But thanks to undervolting being software controlled, you don't have any problems booting or anything like that with an undervolt applied. So that's the positives of it there. For the longer test, which ensures full stability, play whatever game you like playing or do whatever workload that you do on your PC. This will fully show that your undervolt is bulletproof. So now that you've verified that your undervolt is solid, it's time to do what you usually do on your PC, whether that's playing games, rendering out them timelines or whatever it may be enjoy it you'll be using a lot less power and hopefully your pc should be a lot less hotter as well you could also overclock the memory on your graphics card as well it's a very easy overclock like on my rtx 3080 i overclocked it by 500 megahertz so it's running at 10 gigahertz on the memory at right now so Yes, this GDDR6X memory is kind of no joke, to be honest. And GPU memory overclocks don't really output that much more heat either, so it's a quick and easy overclock. So hopefully your GPU will be running cooler, quieter, and it will be using a lot less power as well. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. If you found this one helpful, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content and how-to tips like this, and I will catch you in the next one.